Well, here at home, she was known as Cape Breton's First Lady of Song, as comfortable singing about coal miners as she was about the joys and challenges of life. Rita McNeil died last night at the age of 68, and tonight she's being remembered as a true Canadian original. The CBC's Tom Murphy now. He's got more from Halifax. Tom. Peter, Rita McNeil died from complications from an undisclosed surgery. She leaves behind an indelible mark on the Canadian music scene. You're flying on your own. Rita McNeil was an unlikely star. Shy, humble, but could she sing? You could hold me down. She made it look easy, but in her last interview, she admitted for her it was not. It was terrifying just to get in front of an audience. I still have stage fright. Sometimes you feel we just might make it. Life wasn't easy for Rita either. Born with a cleft palate, poor, a single mother, she worked as a cleaning woman and finally shone on the national stage at the age of 42. That's when she won her first of three Junos for most promising female artist. International fame would follow. The, the one thing that I've always had to do is believe in the dream. She drew her lyrics from her life. Her songs lifted her out of poverty, and with them, the spirit of so many. I think I'll just forget the cue cards and speak to you right from my heart. Connecting with people, that was Rita's talent, as she did with her Cape Breton anthem, Working Man, a tribute to coal miners. It's a First time we did it just clicked and it just it was very emotional for us and, and for Rita too, I think. Along the way, Rita inspired a generation of musicians. She was there before us, uh, you know, blazing a trail in the uh, on an unmapped road. 24 albums, millions of records and CDs sold, her own show on CBC TV in the mid-1990s. And still, to those back home in Cape Breton, she was simply Rita. Cape Breton is Rita McNeil, Rita McNeil is Cape Breton. The loss was felt by fellow Nova Scotia icon Anne Murray. I think it's remarkable that she was ab uh, able to achieve what she achieved. She was just so talented. You know, somebody asked me earlier what I, if I had Rita here, what I would say to her. And I said this, thanks for being Rita. And being Rita meant not shying away from who she was. In a business that worships glamour, Peter, she was just Rita. All right, Tom, thank you. Tom Murphy in Halifax tonight. George Strombolopoulos interviewed Rita McNeil on his program this past December. It turned out to be the last television interview she would do. George joins us here in studio. Um, her impact, you know, you hear those icons talking about her in Tom's item. But her impact in your view? Well, for a lot of kids, it's when they first heard their parents singing music in the house, was playing a Rita McNeil record, which was so lovely, and her specials were so impactful. But for me, it's on that Rita and Friends show. She was booking bands that were on the edges of music. Rita put Sloan, but the Headstones and Rusty on her show. Even Gion and Moxie Fruvis got on Rita's show. Bands like that don't normally get on shows like Rita and Friends, but she was able to do that, and it spoke to her power, but also her openness. Most of us know her, obviously, for her music, but she was also a very early advocate of women's rights. She was right out there. Yep. Joined the Toronto Women's Caucus, early 70s, about 1971. Uh, I think in March of 72, was in Winnipeg, got caught up in an RCMP investigation in that they opened a file, and the, the word on her in the file was, she's the one that sings women's libs songs. She had that Born a Woman song, which became an album. That's the one that actually got her into the folk festivals, and it was a, it was a protest song. So she really was a feminist icon when it wasn't fashionable to do it in the early 70s. You know, later tonight, you're going to uh, rebroadcast that, that last interview. What was she like? To interview. She was funny, man. She was funny and she was kind. And when we played her back the part of her performing on the Trailer Park Boys, <laughs> she, you know, selling marijuana, like she was the best about it. Um, she was uh, smart and talkative. And I think a lot of people thought, she says she's shy, and she, I guess, suppose she was, but she was talkative and engaging and warm. Uh, and man, she made us all laugh a lot. George, thank you. Great to have Thanks, you. Thanks, Peter.